Hello my lovelies, welcome to part two of Touch Starve. Now this is the second part of the first stream when I first played the game, so that's why we have a little bit of an intro. I wanted to quickly come here and explain how this video is set up. This is for anybody who didn't get the chance to see it. But Leander, we um, meet him, or we're about to go meet him at the end of part one aka the first half of the stream so i ended the first part which is already on my youtube which you guys have probably already seen if you haven't please go catch up um we ended that first part after talking to curious who tells us to go find leander at this bar and i ended there just as we're going into the alleyway and then we're supposed to go find leander so that's where we are right now in the second part just going to be some clips a lot of fun moments um and then part three and part four hopefully to come soon but that's it for now so please enjoy this video um and i'll catch you at the end Resigned to my dismissal, I slipped through the back door. Oh, it's morning. Thank God it's not nighttime. I'd have been scared. Followed the line of identical posters around the corner and nearly hit my head on the dangling wood sign. Looking up, faded orange letters read, The Wet Wick. Oh yeah, we lit in the bar. The inside of the bar is a far cry from the abandoned exterior. This is not even midday, yet most of the tables and booths are occupied by a loose assembly of people in matching green cloaks. I'm no stranger to bars. Sometimes I would take my books to the local- She's just a main character. Sometimes I would take my books to the local tavern for a change of scenery. But I much prefer quieter places. Girl. Well, oh my god, wait, she's an alchemist, so she does read a lot. I'm sorry. A curious glance doesn't turn up anyone with a dagger-shaped earring. Show, show, show! The remaining green cloaks abandoned the bar and their booths rush towards the center of the room in a sudden torrent. There's no time to move out of the way. I'm caught swept along the owl-stretched current. H hey! I thrash, throwing my out my elbows as the press of bodies grow heavier. My hip knocks it to the table. I grip it, holding on tight to setting myself. But the crowd has still. Chanting stopped. A pair of gilded boots right across the tabletop. Pectorals! Seriously, you dogs? Again? What should his voice sound like? Seriously, you dogs? Again? I'm sorry, I'm not doing voices. Scattered laughter and cheers ride from, rise from the audience. I drag my eyes upward. It's Levi from Attack on Titan! This is really the last time, alright? This time, when he speaks, the audience falls silent as though bewitched by his magnetic presence, a rich, low voice. But nothing is as captivating as his smile. He beams at the crowd around him, a performer on his makeshift stage. Don't blink, or you'll miss it. He raises his hand above the audience and snaps. A flash of pale green light, real magic, no ordinary stage magic, blinds me. Oh, God. A delicate flower stem sprouts from between his pinched fingers. One by one, growing lily petals spring forth. Cool. I've never seen something so beautiful and intricate, conjured so efforts, conjured so effortlessly. Leander must be an incredibly gifted mage. No wonder Curious recommended him. <sighs> Leander plucks the iridescent bouquet out of the air and turns in a sl uh, turns in a slow circle, giving his audience a good luck. Now, who could use some good luck? Eager onlookers scoot closer to the table. Some reach for the lilies, while others whistle and call Leander's name. But his cool green eyes slide right over them, locking on minds instead. How about you? Oh, my chest tightens. Every person gathered turns to stare at me. Gotta take the flowers. Uh, I need some luck. I got some bad luck. I reach out, all too aware of the way my fingers tr tremble as I carefully take the flowers from him. There's no weight on them. No, only a faint warmth that radiates from the stems. As soon as the flowers leave Leander's hands, the light dims. To my surprise, Leander laughs under his breath. 
That's the problem with flowers. They don't last long, but they leave an impression, right? Yes, they do. He grins at me and I find myself smiling back. Oh, he has bags under his eyes. He gets no sleep. You can rub your back. Leander steps off the table, dropping among the excited crowd with an audible click. All right, bloodhounds, get back to your drinks. Show's over. The green cloaks disperse at his command, returning to their tables and booth. Before I can make my way towards Leander, his eyes find me. He gives me a friendly wave, then beckons me over to the crowd, crowded counter. I manage to squeeze behind, beside him, but there's, no, there's so little room that his broad shoulders press against mine. I tense, but he doesn't seem to mind at all. This is your first time to Erida? He says it lightly, with a, general air, a genuine air of curiosity. Do I stick out that much? No, but I'm certainly I'd remember seeing a face as lovely as yours around Lotal. Anyways, my eyes flicker to the polished countertop. <laughs> I'm not used to flattery, and being this close makes eye contact difficult. As if on cue, the bartender approaches us. What can I get you? Surprise me and add anything my friends want. My friend wants to my tab. I wasn't expecting the generosity, but I have to admit I do feel a little thirsty after that fried dough. I'll have what he's having. I don't even need a drink. I'll have what he's having. While the bartender leaves to fix our drink, Yonder leans his elbows on the counter. I'm close enough to notice the purple shadow under the purple shadows under his lower lids. He's a tired man. How about we continue this outside? Mm. I follow Leander into an alleyway tucked behind the wet wick where layers of the frayed bloodhounds posters have been plastered to the walls. Seeing them side by side, the resemblance between Leander and his likeness on the poster is impressive. Eris didn't send you here for help with Cenobium, did he? From the look he gives me, he already knows the answer. I glance away. No, he didn't. He, suggest he, he suggested I find an alternative. But here you are. Ask him about them anyway. What do you need the Cenobium for? I don't want to tell him about my curse. The less people know about my capabilities, the better. Thankfully, Leander takes my reluctant silence as the answer. Well, I see you're already aware of the city's currency. Information's worth is weight in gold here. Curious told you the truth. The Cenobium is dangerous. They're on their bad side and they'll imprison you if you're lucky, or torture you if you're not. Torture? My teacher never described anything like that. But Cenobium's supposed to be a place of learning, a sanctuary. The Cenobium has always been a shining beacon of hope in the world seeped in nightmares. If any place held answers, it would be the Cenobium. That's why I came here. That's why you. That's what they want you to think. The things that seem too good to be true often are just that. With such a simple statement, and yet it leaves me reeling. If it's true, if I staked everything on a lie, what now? Leander clears his throat. <clears throat> but, as I always say, there's solutions to every problem, and alternatives to every solution. I am being optimistic. He claps his hands and turns towards to me with a br brilliant smile. That's why Curious pointed me, pointed you to the bloodhounds. Mm -mm. He's a puppy. He's a golden retriever. Let let us help you. Whether it's hunting solace, finding people, or recovering stolen valuables, we can do it all, and free of charge. I'm shaking my head before he even finishes his practice speech. My patience is wearing dangerously thin. Listen, I appreciate the offer, but my problem can't be solved by a by a group of good Samaritans. Then your problems must be fairly serious. You're searching for a magical solution, aren't you? When my eyes widen, he nods along. Though he expected all along, I'd be happy to help you out. That is, if you tell me what owls you. I hate to admit it, but this could be my only path forward. My confession comes out in a pain whisper. I'm cursed. Cursed? Oh, now I'm very curious. What kind of curse? Something ancestral or more recent? 
He looks me up and down, taking in my face, my eyes, and finally my hands. It's your hands, isn't it? I waited until my certain voice, until my certain voice will remain steady before answering. My touch is dangerous. It changes people, hurts them. Before I even finish, Leander begins taking his gloves off. He tugs his left hand free and flexes his finger. Let's see it. Oh! He offers me his hand, an enchantment for protection, but I'm already shrieking backwards. Can't. I don't care how confident Leander is. I can't bring myself to hurt him, to see his face, his kind face twist into a mask of madness. Oh, she loves him. Believe me, this isn't an ordinary curse. I'll be fine. Perhaps where you come from, a curse is just strange and one of a kind. But spend a year in this city, you'll see a thousand curses and thrice as many cures. Do you really think Curious would send you here if I couldn't handle it? How do I know? I only met him today. I'm as good as any mage in Sonobin. Better, even. If they can help, so can I. Mmm. You don't know what you're asking me. I'm asking you to trust me. Mmm. I look from Leander's outstressed hand to his confident smile. Then with a short breath, I begin. I begin unwinding the bandages from my hand. Fine. But if you lose control, don't say I didn't warn you. You can tie me up first so that makes you feel better. Ah, he's... Oh no, Leander. Ugh. Yeah. With each joint I expose, I grow more and more certain that this is a terrible idea. Ready when you are. If he's bothered by the way my hands look, he doesn't show it. My fingers hover shakily over his palm. Three... Two, one. I'm gonna touch him. Damn. I, sh <sighs> I should touch him, right, guys? He's gonna be okay. He has to be. He's he's powerful. I tap his palm once, as quickly as possible. It's barely more than a brush, but that's all it ever takes. <laughs> when I look at his face, expecting to see the worst, Leander only grins. See? Can't be. This time when I reach out to touch Leander's palm again, he catches my wrist before I can pull away. I told you, there's really nothing to worry about. Oh, he's blushing. He's blushing. He trails off when my thumb brushes the soft skin off his inner wrist. Okay, let's talk real quick, y'all. I probably have to be with- I'm sorry if this is too loud. I probably have to be with him, because if he's the only person I can touch... Wait, no, but that means that Curus, Curus probably touched me when he was fixing my arm. Okay, anyways. I search Leander's face for traces of madness, but his eyes remain a clear, soft green. Color rises in his cheeks, but he remains still, except for the subtle bobbing of his throat. <laughs> That's what he said. <laughs> I've been with other people, kiss them. Oh, so she has been with other people. I thought she was just lonely her whole life. Been embraced by them and more, but not like this. Oh, girl. <laughs> My fingers long deprived by years of bandaging pick up every single detail. The grooves of his palm, the smooth shell of his nails, the pulse of his heart. <laughs> For as long as I've lived, I've never been able to hold someone's hand, not without a dire con dire consequences. I never realized what I was missing until this moment. Ew! While Leander's pulse is steady, mine is hammering as fear gives way to excitement. <laughs> All right, y'all, we gotta keep touching his hand. I like him already. I feel like he's my favorite already. Hold on, I'm trying to drink some water. Okay. I'm gonna keep touching them. No! It's messed up. Oh, she's touching them all over! She's really getting in there. My hand glides over Leander's wrist up to his forearm where smooth skin abruptly gives way to the rise 
scar by the edge of his sleeve. Ugh. Ugh. It matches the one that runs from his collar to cheekbone. Could it be the same wound? Imagine it's just like long. Ooh. Um, I glance at Leander's face and his lips part as he considers his words before speaking. Am I f the first person you've been able to touch like this? Ah! Ah! My hand goes still on his arm. So far. <laughs> this is so nasty. It's so early in the morning, guys. Let's calm down. I'll admit, your touch does make it somewhat difficult to stay level-headed. Ooh, but not due to your power. He's... <laughs> Mm, 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 mm. Oh. Anyways, I'm sorry. He takes my hand. His feel like I'm on on spicy book talk right now. You very much are. Look, we match. Ugh. He points at the gold pin on his collar on his coat collar, and I give him a small smile. Talking about we match. I draw my hand back and take a steady breath. My head feels as though it's stuffed with cotton. Habit alone guides me through the motions of rewrapping my hand, although my fingers tremble too much for the bad ditch to lie flat. Can't believe that worked. May I ask your name? I'm Madison. <gasps> you were right to hide this from me, Madison. This curse of yours, it's unlike anything I've ever dealt with. Um, I can tell you're discreet. You'd best not go showing, off, showing that off to anyone else. I didn't plan on it. Are you staying in Motown? Pause. Board was something I hadn't con yet considered. I don't know. Let's get you properly settled then. Ooh, can I stay with you? <laughs> the wet wick is noticeably quieter. Without their leader, most of the bloodhounds have dis dispersed, or in few cases, fallen asleep beside their drinks. Got any rooms left, or did my lot grab them all, all to sleep it off? The bartender, who I now realize doubles as an innkeeper, slides a key onto the counter. You know I always keep the corner room open for your- <laughs> So like that, bro. So like that, bro. The Ender's laugh sounds slightly strained, and I always appreciate it, but you're mistaken. This is just for my friend Madison. Uh, sure, sure. Stay as long as you like. You two have fun. Um, Leander clears his throat, then holds the key out to me, but I hesitate. My coin purse barely holds enough for the day's worth of meals, let alone a room. How much do I owe you? Nothing. Bloodhound rates. I treat since you shared your secret. Food, drink, a warm bed, anything you need. Carefully, I take the key from him. It's small, but weighs heavy in my palm. I never expected to have a warm bed in Irida, let alone free meals. Thank you. Go explore Madison. You'll find many roles in Arida, each leading to different answers. What if you need to a repetitive? What the fuck? What from what haunts you? <laughs> Come find me. I nod, taking one last look at the gleaming bronze key before tucking it into the pocket of my cloak for safekeeping. Leander gives me one last friendly way before I depart. All right, bye, Buki. I'll miss you. I'll think about you every day and every night. I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this quick look to part two. Part three and four will be on the way soon. Go ahead and follow me on Twitch if you don't already at Lovely Maddie. So this way you can see all of these streams live because I do edit these and post them on YouTube for anybody that misses them. But we have so much fun on Twitch. So please, please go follow me on there. Besides that, please comment how you feel so far between Acurus and Leander, who you like the most. Um, comment your favorite moment of meeting Leander. Also, like subscribe put notifications on so this way you know when those parts come out any support is great support and i love you all so so very much until next time bye